Welcome back, peeps. Just like peanut butter and jelly, we have angular and core. And we're going to take both of these together and we're going to put them together, boom, into a perfect code sandwich. Keep your head in the cloud. All right, let's get started. So of course we're going to start up a .NET Core using uh, Angular. So the project come on up here. And of course the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start uh, by adding some uh, folders. So let's get those folders in. I try to start all the projects with the uh, particular items that I'm going to need first, which is usually just the basic structure, the environment variables, and the models. Those seem to come up almost immediately. All right, so we're looking good here. First off, let's get our model in. This is just going to be our response model in which uh, we're going to collect information that comes back from our uh, API test. And you'll know what's uh, being returned from the APIs from the, the examples uh, that they give you this particular uh, API just returns a here for um, the response. And it's just a check to make sure that you're actually connecting, which ends up being super useful, especially when you are troubleshooting to make sure that the uh, API hasn't gone down. Can't tell you how many times I've been troubleshooting my own code instead of just checking to see if the API was still there or I was having connectivity issues. So having this as a first page is always good. And then the next thing we're gonna be setting up, of course, is the environment variables. And one thing to note here, um, be ultra careful when you add these variables, uh, one slash or, or any um, deviation from what's being expected will throw havoc into uh, uh, your first initial test and be running around where if you would have just paid attention, mostly when I need to pay attention to make sure that I have these exactly right. For this particular API, they have a, a base URL and they have a code per environment. So this uh, helps you from not submitting things in prod when you're in test and these sort of things. So it's a double check. All right, so now let's uh, add in these uh, um, environment variables. We're just gonna set up some uh, private strings and then uh, we're going to inject them into the constructor. And this is a anti-pattern of course but uh, it gives us the ability to have particular environment variables um, without switching the app, because you, then you can store these on the outside and it will just go and grab the uh, variables depending on what environment you're on. So in tests, you'll have test variables, in prod, you'll have prod variables. And we're gonna be doing this through I configuration. All right, let me just uh, get the values. Make sure that you type this in specifically since there is an IntelliSense on it.
All right, looks good. So now we're going to be uh, creating our uh, first um, function that calls out to our test uh, API endpoint. We're going to be doing this using uh, the async task. And so async uh, gives us the ability to be more um, performant when we're at volume. And uh, what it does, it makes all the calls and then we can use a waiters to then uh, make sure that the uh, particular calls lined up as necessary. And you can see how our, our model is uh, immediately coming in handy. So then the idea with having a, a base URL is most APIs have the same endpoint names and then the URL base URL changes. So if you switch the base, then you'll have the ability to uh, log in in dev tests, UAT, prod, whatever environments they have. And here's a query helper. And, and where this is helpful is it, it sorts out the uh, URL parameters by adding the question marks and ampersands as needed. So this is where our code goes. And then we're gonna make the call. We're gonna be using a, a using statement. So we uh, make the call and it, it opens up the connection and then closes it right after and this helps protect memory so you don't have a whole bunch of open connections it opens it and closes it using the using statement Okay, great. So now we've got in our request, and then we're going to use a get method and the URL we're calling. In most uh, APIs, you need to tell it what type of information structure that you're sending it. So we're going to send our information in JSON, which is very common. You'll find with older uh, APIs or institutional APIs, sometimes they'll use XML. All And you see here's our waiter, so we're going to await um, for the async response to return in our code before we move to the next step. And then once we have that response, the main thing that we're going to be looking for right now is the content of that response. There's many different uh, parameters that come back, but we want to grab that content and then we want to uh, deserialize it into our uh, model. And then we want to return it. All right, looks good. So the next thing we want to do is we want to take this and we want to add it to our interface. So let's uh, create the interface file. And usually interface files just have the I and then the particular service that they are representing. And don't forget to uh, add public here. 
and we'll trip you up if you don't have that. And then we just cut and paste in the uh, particular function name and then add the model. And that's all it takes. So then usually I just cut and paste this and then continue up the stack to the controller. All right. And we can just move down the, the presets. I usually don't delete these out uh, initially because uh, they're good examples to uh, troubleshoot against. So here we're going to create our environment variables, the same that we did uh, on the service. Then we're just going to grab this uh, class name and create a constructor out of it. That way we can inject our configurations. And then what we're doing here is we're just adding our configurations that are injected to the private uh, read only so it can be consumed by the other functions in this class. And now let's uh, create our endpoint. Of course, we're going to use uh, async through the whole process. I'm just going to bring this down in here so we have an example to uh, grab the uh, specifics for our call. Always helpful when it comes to spelling and whatnot. Just makes things faster. And then see here how we're calling the interface. using and now we're connecting to the actual service itself and we'll bring that in and we'll add the config to it. All right, looks like it's throwing an error here. Oh, we didn't add the uh, interface to our service, so we have to uh, go over here and add it. There we go. There, now everything's tied together. So now that we have our uh, service and our config, then now let's actually create the model for the response and uh, call our service. And then we're just going to return the response so that we can see that uh, we've successfully connected. And let's get rid of uh, extra. So everything looks set.
Well, one thing here, I see the, the uh, names are a little different. We have uh, the process service and then we have process services. So let's just tighten up this and, and get the services S in the interface itself. Little details, but it all makes a difference. All right, so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to create our Angular app. So we have our API created in C-sharp, so now we're going to put on our Angular uh, thinkings, and of course there are two separate types of programming. So we'll uh, switch to creating our first uh, TypeScript file, and we're going to follow the, the same pattern that we did with the C sharp, we're going to create our model, which is going to mirror our model in the C sharp code. And the syntax, of course, is a little bit different because this is JavaScript. And now let's actually add our component. Let's give it an API test. And then we're going to mirror the pattern of this project, not using a test file for now. All right. So now let's get this file connected. So we'll go down to the app modules and let's uh, import this in. We can just follow the pattern of this uh, fetch data above. and then use the auto fill as much as possible. Okay. Let's just make sure that we've got the uh, correct name, which we don't. So let's go and grab that. Need a component on it. And then let's put this in the uh, declarations and add it to our route. This is a very uh, consistent pattern where we create the component and then we add it to the app module and then we add the navigation. Oops. All right, looks good. So now let's put this as part of the menu system. And I'll just put it at the end here. And here's another one to make sure that you type everything in perfectly. All right, looks good. So now let's uh, fire it on up. And if this is the first time you're firing it up, uh, it may take a while to download um, all the packages. I did kind of cut that out of the middle here just so you aren't waiting. But you can pause the video while yours is uh, bringing down all the packages. All right, and we're up and running. Let's see what we got here. So we got our hello world, which just means that everything's going good. We've got our site component. So now let's set some uh, breakpoints and see if we're actually getting something here. Okay. 
We're going to bring in our HTTP client. We're going to make our request uh, directly from the component. In future videos, we'll break this out into a data services. But for now, for a test, it's good just to go direct. And of course, here comes our model. Looks good. Let me just take out some of this. And this is just going to hold our response. Putting the public in front of this isn't necessary. If you don't, uh, declare it, then it is automatically public. And right now, let's uh, go up to our fetch data and let's just grab this constructor and mess around for a little bit, just kind of hand rolling it and failed. So now I'm going to what's already created and see if I can get this to fire. So there's some details about this one that isn't working. It's giving me heartburn. So we're just gonna hand, we're just gonna take something that is working and then graft in the unique pieces and see if we can get it to fire from there. It's kind of a common strategy of mine to, if there is some sort of a minor technical issue that hand typing is not working, I just find an example that is in the app and then come back in and fill in the unique pieces. So added the test connection and added the model. And now let's go and be very careful about grabbing the endpoint name specifically. And let's add that in here. And now I can see my error was uh, this uh, piece of uh, the URL, it, it was slightly different uh, than I expected. All right, so now we have this. It's fired on up. All right, and let's give it a test. So we set some breakpoints. Looks like we've come in to C sharp side of the world. Make sure that our environment variables are loading. Looks good. URI is coming in. And we got the okay, so we're looking great. So let's come back in and we do not have anything showing on the display, which is not that big of a deal because I just forgot to actually add it to the UI. So I don't think we have any errors in our code. We just need to add this to the HTML. And we can set a uh, breakpoint in here. Let's grab this bad boy and put him where we can see him. And we're just going to use the double brackets to put it in here. That way we get a visual. And usually a page like this I'll have in any of the apps just as a sanity check. 
All right, we've got our tracing through the code. And there it is, we have our here. So we have successfully connected to the API. Congratulations, you have finished your first PB and J code sandwich. We've combined Angular and Core to make an initial API connection. So if you have any questions or comments, please write them below and hit that notification and like button. Keep your head in the cloud.